everybody welcome back to another episode of kelvin posey fishing so if you're new here make sure to hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that notification bell that way every time i put out a new video you get notified and it helps me out a whole lot i really appreciate it so today we're going to talk about those days where you gotta go fishing and nothing quite works out like you was hoping it for so um a couple weekends ago, me and my dad, we went uh, up to a, a, a reservoir that we fished ever since I was a kid, uh, Bear Creek. And um, it was supposed to be a pretty day, um, warm, uh, sunny, five, six mile an hour winds. And we show up and the wind's blowing about 17, 18 miles an hour, started raining. Uh, so obviously it's cloudy and it was like 59 degrees. It was, it was pretty awful. So we're gonna cover those bases of how we how we caught the fish while we were there and our mindset as we was walking through um going to the boat trying to figure out exactly what we were going to do and stuff so stay tuned this is something you don't want to miss <laughs> all right everybody so um this is going to be probably one of the simplest um videos i've made in a long time because we tend as fishermen we tend to overthink what these bass do especially during these times so in the spring everybody's expectation is get on the water and you're just going to catch tons of fish no matter what you do it's the spring they're getting ready to spawn you got you got your pre-spawners you got your spawners you got your post spawners so every fishing style order catch fish and in a way that is true but also there's curve balls that gets thrown at us as fishermen or anglers that um you know a lot of times it just throws our whole game off it's uh it's a momentum game so it's kind of like you're you're going downhill really fast and then you start trying to make it up the hill and you just didn't catch enough speed to to clear the hill you know um so hopefully i can help you uh not lose that momentum um so our mindset when we went in, we were 100% gonna try for pre-spawners. Um, the, the number one reason that I prefer and my dad prefers to fish for pre-spawners is simply because our eyesight. So as we've gotten older, our eyesight's not as good. We have tried expensive glasses and everything else. It, it just, our eyes are just not as good as they were at one time. Um, so we prefer catching pre-spawn and post-spawn fish if we can help it now every now and again we'll get locked on a uh, spawner even though we can't see them and we'll, we'll end up catching um, that spawner but either way um so we get there and we have this expectation where we're going to be throwing crankbaits and texas rigging worms and um, um, spinner baits and jerk baits, just all these different lures that we expect to catch fish really fast on the move. And when we get there, we see how hard the wind's blowing, the rain's coming in, and all this stuff. So immediately we had to swap our mindsets and change to something different. So the water, while we or when we had got up there, luckily was not extremely muddy it wasn't kind of muddy it was just a uh like a green color just a a soft green so the water was pretty clear especially for that lake so we really had to make adjustments on um uh, our lures so the first the first thing that um we attempted to do we, we were hitting riprap that was moving back up into coves so riprap around your bridges and stuff like that that's moving back up in uh, little spawning pockets that was a great way to um, attempt to catch those fish. So one of the things that we were using to catch uh, those fish off the rip wrap was a, um, a football head jig. And it's hard to beat a football head jig, especially um, when it's, uh, when the wind's just blowing. So this one right here is actually a um, 3 8 ounce. I prefer a 3 8 ounce if I can get away with it. It's just got a little bit slower rate of fall. And 90% of the time when I pop this thing up off the bottom, they're going to hit it on that slow fall. Um, so it'll hit bottom, make a couple pops, and keep moving the bait just like that. And eventually, before I get to the boat, typically, uh, not on every cast, obviously, but typically um, between casts and stuff, they will hit that bait on the fall. And when I say popping a jig, 
During this time of year, the biggest mistake I see a lot of people make, they're still stuck in that winter time or either they're just, uh, they're, they're just getting back into fishing out of hunting season and their game's kind of thrown off. So not everybody fishes during the winter like a lot of us do. So when you throw that jig out there and it, it hits bottom, a lot of people have the tendency to pull the jig, reel up the slack, pull the jig, reel up the slack. Yes, that can work, and sometimes it does work. But 90% of the time, from this point in spring forward to winter, all through all through spring, all through summer, all through fall, you want to pop a jig. You're making the bass react. You're not trying to get the fish to follow it, smell it, sniff it, make sure its diapers changed, and all that good stuff. You're wanting them to simply react to the bait. So if you picture a crawfish, a crawfish is laying on bottom, something attempts to uh, eat it. The thing is gonna turn around and it's gonna hold its pinchers up, right? It's gonna hold its pinchers up in a defensive position. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the reactions of crawfish. I'm sure you can find it somewhere on the internet. They're gonna hold the pinchers up, just like a lobster or a crab or whatever. Do the same thing, hold them pinchers up. Now, if the crawfish is trying to escape, from a predator like a fish or something like that that crawfish is sitting on bottom and it's going to pop up like this and it's going to keep doing that to get away so i want to mimic that with my jig so what i'm doing with this jig is i'm taking it and i'm casting it out there letting it hit the rip wrap and then i'm popping the jig so i'm not like i'm setting the hook but i'm just popping my rod tip and then i'll let that thing fall on dead slack reeling it up pop 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 Reel up my slack once it hits bottom, pop, 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 keep doing that. Um, and, and what that does is that triggers a reaction bite. You're mimicking that crawfish doing like this, okay? And when that bass sees that bait start to fall, that's when it reacts and hits your bait. Um, this right here is a G-Money jig football head. As y'all know, I prefer G-Money jigs. Um, I'm not still affiliated with them. I'm not affiliated with any companies, okay? Um, but G Money Jigs, in my opinion, and War Eagle Finesse Jigs are the two best jigs you can use on the market, in my opinion. Now, I haven't tried them all, but the ones that I have tried, I, I love. So, with this black and blue, the reason I was throwing the black and blue is obviously because it was a darker day. Um, just a lot of cloud cover, a lot of wind, water and stuff's real choppy. So, I typically go with a black and blue um if the black and blue don't work then i just simply swap to a brown okay uh, brown and black that i mean that's about it your crawfish are going to be two main colors basically uh you're going to have that green greenish brown color with orange or red and then you're going to have the darker uh black with the blue color on the crawfish it all depends on what the crawfish are eating in that lake so you can look that stuff up on the internet research it yourself i don't have time to go into it it would be an hour video probably so, um, but I, I, this time of year, I typically um, just team it up with a Rage Chunk or Yum Crawl, Christy Crawl, something like that. Something with a lot of action. It, it doesn't matter. Just whatever I have on hand that uh, has a lot of action that looks like a crawfish that I can put on the end of the jig here. Um, my jig set up, um, I like a seven foot medium heavy. This is a Ducket Triad. I'm not affiliated with Ducket anymore. Um, but whatever seven foot medium heavy you like, all the rods are typically the same. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, just whatever you can afford, whatever you got on hand. I like a seven foot medium heavy when I'm not in super, super heavy cover. If I'm fishing points, if I'm fishing riprap and stuff like that, yes. If I'm flipping logs and stuff like that, I may move up to something like seven foot two heavy, seven foot four heavy, something like that. Um, but a lot of people like the slower gear ratio. When I'm fishing the points, and I'm fishing uh, riprap and stuff like that, I typically like a seven one to one gear ratio reel. That's just my preference. Uh, you do lose a little bit of torque, but I can pick up that line slack pretty quick because a lot of times those fish, what they'll do is, uh, especially on points, they'll pick that bait up and then they'll start moving across the point. So you really have to catch up in time and you don't want to set the hook on slack line, you break your line every time. Um, but I run 15 pound um, uh, fluorocarbon, uh, this is Seaguar Red Label, I think. It's been so long since I've changed the line on this. Um, either way, it's Seaguar. It's either a Braze X or a Red Label. Either one. Both of them is really good. Um, but 15-pound test, 
fluorocarbon. I like fluorocarbon, not as much stretch on the uh, on the jig. As far as the fish not being able to see it underwater, that's debatable. Um, but I, I prefer fluorocarbon. I get a lot better um, hook sets and stuff like that. So uh, now, real quick, one thing that I wanted to make sure that we were doing to maximize our time because my dad that was in the boat he can't he can't be in a boat for extremely long periods of time just because of his back and stuff um so we wanted to maximize the time that we had on the water to catch as many fish as we possibly could so um one of the ways that we did that is a spinner bait so this time of year when the shad's spawning when the bass is spawning um and then you have those cloudy days with a lot of wind, even the sunshiny days with a lot of wind. But you really, for a spinnerbait to be just perfect conditions for a spinnerbait, wind, I'm not going to say is necessary, but it seems to help more than not having wind. Okay. So, um, um, either way, the baits that I prefer to run this time of year, as far as spinnerbaits, these are called spot stickers and they are kind of expensive uh i only own like four maybe five of them yeah i own four i own four of them yeah all i own is four of them and the reason i only own four is because i have four for whatever conditions uh, that i'm fishing so this is what a spot sticker looks like now these things right here they're a little bit different than most of the spinner baits that you use. Are they a secret bait? Not really. Uh, you can find them, I, well, I don't know if you can find them at any store, but you can find them on Tackle Warehouse. Uh, our local tackle stores have them here. But either way, they don't come in a package. They're just hanging up on, uh, usually on the tackle shop wall. And uh, they're, they're, when these baits move through the water, they've got a little bit of a shimmy. So when they're moving, they're kind of shimmying just like this. But you can reel the bait extremely fast without the bait rolling, okay? So this time of year, especially when the with the aggressive pre-spawners, it makes these fish react instantly. So typically I take these baits and I run them extremely close to cover. So any kind of lay downs, 90% of the fish that I caught the other day um, was off of the spot sticker um, spinner bait. The rest of them come off the jig. Okay. Um, so we would like be moving down the rip route and we would see these logs and stuff laying, um, you know, either offshore of the rip route or either extremely close. And what we're doing is we're picking that little high percentage areas off. So those areas where there may be one big fish sitting, um, um, and trying to pick up the little ones here and there that's in between. Um, and the spinnerbait really shined on that specific situation just because of the wind, the rain, uh, the cloudiness and stuff. It, it's just, it, you can keep your line tight. So if you get bit, you know you've got that fish on your hook. Um, you can run these through grass. Uh, and I don't mean the matted grass, obviously. I'm talking about like the willow grass and stuff that's just sticking up. Uh, in your in your typical lakes uh not the stuff that just all gummy and gets all over your stuff not them but just your typical like willow grass is sticking up so um these four spinner baits i use these depending on the situation so like the other day we had the um, cloudiness we had the rain and so on and so forth and in that specific lake 90% of the bait that these fish are eating is threadfin shad. So I typically like to use this one right here. So if you look, the blades are actually painted white with a little bit of purple and stuff on them. This mimics a threadfin shad perfectly. Um, I throw this one on the cloudy days because of the white blades. The fish can see this from far, far off, okay? So the purple with the white, cloudy days when it's windy all right now let's say 
it's flip-flop. Let's say it's windy, but it's sunny like it is here today. Uh, but I'm still wanting to mimic the thread fin. This is called a lavender shad, okay? This has still got that little bit of purple. This also can mimic the blueback herring if you have a lake that has blueback herring in it. Uh, I use this a lot up on Smith Lake, but the blades are painted silver with a little bit of purple, uh, purple flake in it. Um, so this would be my typical go-to uh, on those windy, sunny days because of the silver blades, specifically because of the silver blades, okay? Threadfin shad, silver blades, sunny day. All right, now let's say it's a sunny day, typical anywhere, just, just a beautiful day, okay? Not a whole lot of wind, a little bit of wind, uh, just pretty. This is the typical... Uh, one that I run, I'm, I don't remember exactly what this color is called, but it's got a little bit of chartreuse. Why it looks like your typical spinner bait, but the blades has got a little bit of chartreuse and uh, um, uh, if you see it, a little bit of chartreuse and uh, green, greenish blue in it. Um, this mimics any kind of shad very, very, very well. Um, especially if you start getting around those uh, fish that are trying to bed up, this can mimic a bluegill or bluegill very easily and tempt those uh, little male buck bass if you're just needing to pick up a couple more. Now, let's say I'm on a lake where it's full of gizzard shad, somewhere, um, let's just say Gunnersville, Tennessee River, something, something like that. It's got the big old gizzard shad in it. This is the one that I typically prefer to run. Um, this is sim similar to the uh, purple one that I was talking about, but this one helps with the gizzard shad. This one also has the white blades, but it also has the sparkles in it. I will typically throw this one, whether it's sunny or cloudy, um, as long as I'm around gizzard shad, because a lot of times those gizzard shad will follow this bait right here back to your boat. So if you can find those gizzard shad, see exactly where they're going, then you'll find the bass. Um, so just always remember that. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about my setup for spinning baits. It's a super simple setup. Um, it's a seven foot medium heavy, seven foot medium heavy fast action tip. That's it. Throwing it on seven one to one also. Same pretty much as my jig rod. Okay. Um, this is a ducket triad, whatever seven foot medium heavy that you got will work. Um, but either way, I, just keep it super simple. Um, just remember this time of year, they're going to be holding close to cover. There's going to be some out on your main lake open points uh, next to the, uh, the cover that's on the points. Um, so just, um, just remember, you want the fish to react. You, that's it. You just want the fish to react this time of year. Um, not only does that help you catch more fish, you can cover a lot more water and eliminate stuff in a matter of time. So if you only have two or three hours to fish, then you can cover a lot more water and pick up a lot more fish than you typically would. So if you know those people, you may be one of those that um, go to the lake and uh, you sit on the same spot, you'll sit there on the same spot for an hour, hour and a half, just trying to catch a fish, trying to catch a fish. Oh, I know they're here, I know they're here. Typically, it's not that they're not there. It's just you're not in the right feeding window. Um, so eliminating that water, there's if you're if you're on, let's just say you're on your spot at 12 o'clock and you're not getting bit. If you stay there till two and they're still not biting, you're closing up on that feeding window. And a lot of times, by the time you decide to get up and go, that's when they start feeding. Sometimes it, it just happens like that. So what i prefer to do is i will hit a spot and make several casts if i don't get bit then i move to the next spot and i just keep doing that rotating spots and eventually you'll run start running into feeding windows and you'll go here and you'll catch five or six then you'll go back here and you'll catch five or six then you'll go back here and catch seven or eight i mean it, it's just a recurring cycle you got to get in when those feeding windows are so with all that being said, I hope you take in something from it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure to hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, that notification bell. Most importantly, stay on the water. I'll see you next time. Appreciate it.